Hello everybody, my name is Hunter Reem, and today I'm going to be talking to you about a paradox that me and my roommate noticed while flipping coins. Let's go check it out. Alright, so suppose we have a typical coin, it has heads and tails. What we want to do with this coin is we're simply going to flip it until we see exactly two heads. Once we see the two heads, then we're going to move to the next trial. So for example, let's start out by seeing, let's say, a head two tails, and then another head. Okay, well this will conclude that trial because we've seen the two heads. And now moving to the next trial, let's just suppose that we get a bunch of tails in the row, and then at the very end we see our two heads. Alright, I'm gonna assume you get the point. Let's just suppose that we at least have done four trials. So these trials that I'm putting up on the screen right now is actual data that we came up with by flipping a coin. Notice that in the first trial we saw exactly two of the four of them were heads. And in the second trial, we see exactly two of the six of them are heads. And so you see that there's a ratio of heads in each trial. The question I'll ask initially is what, on average, is the proportion of heads in each trial? So all we're going to do is focus on these proportions over here. And what we're going to do is we're going to add them all together and divide by the number of trials that we've done. In this case, the number is four. When you do this computation, you'll see that it's exactly 0.583 repeating. Now there's no reason that we would say that is ridiculous or not ridiculous. I mean, we've only seen exactly four trials. That's not that much data. But the one thing that I did notice is that this number is greater than 0.5. While this shouldn't be surprising, I do want to point something out in the data itself. So let's pull that back up. Notice that if we count up the number of heads total throughout all trials, I see exactly 8 of them. And if we count the number of tails throughout all of the trials, I also see 8 of them. So even though on average, we're seeing in each trial 58% of the coin flips were heads, in total, 50% of the coin flips were heads. I don't know if this is as surprising for you as it was for me when I first saw it, but I think this is kind of a strange concept. My intuition tells me that these two numbers should be roughly the same. Actually, I think they should be exactly the same. After being confused for a little bit, I decided, well, I might as well investigate this. So the first question that I decided to ask was, what is the expected proportion of heads in each trial? In order to determine this, we're going to need to know how these trials are being distributed. This idea can be modeled using something called the negative binomial distribution. This says that the probability of getting two heads in x trials is modeled by p of x equals to x minus 1 times 1 half to the x. As an example, let's just suppose that we flipped exactly two heads and one tail, and it doesn't really matter the order. What matters is that we got two heads in three flips. To determine the probability of seeing these two heads in three flips, we're just going to put the number 3 in for x into our distribution. Thus, the probability of seeing two heads in three flips is exactly 0.25. Now, in order to find the expected percentage of heads in each trial, we're going to have to look at an infinite sum. In particular, we're going to be weighting each percentage of heads with the probability that that percentage is going to show up. Well, we're going to use the negative binomial distribution to determine the probabilities, so we can put that in right away. And however you choose to compute this series is up to you, but what it ends up being is 0.614. So what this is saying is, as we get closer to an infinite number of trials, the average percentage of heads that you're going to see in each trial is going to be roughly 61%. But it's still true that as you approach an infinite number of trials that you should see about 50% of heads in total. So this means the data that we came up with in the beginning wasn't actually ridiculous at all. In fact, we should expect a difference between the proportion of heads in each trial and the proportion of heads in total. I hope this video is interesting to you because this is somewhat of a paradox. My expectation is that these numbers would be the same, but in fact, they are not. Anyways, thank you for watching and I hope to see you soon.